1001 Questions and Answers on General History by Benjamin Hathaway Greece 1. Where is Greece? The most eastern of three peninsulas which extend southward from Europe. 2. How was ancient Greece divided? Into three parts. The first in the north was composed of Thessaly and Epirus. The second in the middle called Hellas which was the most important part, and the third, the peninsula forming the southern part called Peloponnesus. 3. What can be said of the geographical features of Greece? They had much to do with fixing the character of its inhabitants, the great variety of soil and climate tending to produce a versatile people. 4. Describe the coast of Greece. It is deeply indented with numerous bays having bold promontories reaching far out to sea and forming excellent harbors five how did that affect the greeks it offered them every inducement to a seafaring life six describe the interior of greece the land is cut up by almost impassable mountain ranges seven what was the effect upon the people each little valley being isolated developed its own peculiar life eight Name four important mountains in Greece. Olympus, 10,000 feet high. Parnassus, 8,000 feet high. Penteleus, 4,000 feet high. And Hymettus, 3,400 feet high. 9. What is the origin of the Greeks? They belong to the Aryan family and are in close relation to the people of Central Asia. 10. Who were the primitive inhabitants of Greece? the Pelasgians, a simple agricultural people. 11. Who conquered the country? The Hellenes, a warlike race who gave the land its name Hellas. 12. What were the principal cities of Greece? Athens, Sparta, Corinth, and Thebes. 13. When were these cities founded? About 1500 B.C. 14. What was the earliest period of Grecian history called? the heroic age. 15. Are the events of the heroic age authentic? They are not, but are clouded in mystery. 16. When did Grecian mythology originate? During the heroic age. 17. Name two great traditions of this age, the expedition of the Argos and the Trojan War. 18. Name some noted persons belonging to the heroic age. Hercules, Theseus and Achilles. 19. What is the first clearly defined event of Grecian history? The Dorian migration. 20. What was it? The Dorians, a hardy race from the north, invaded the Peloponnesus and made an entire conquest about the 11th century BC. 21. What is this movement called in history? The return of the Heraclidae, as it was conducted by the descendants of Hercules, who had been banished for more than a century. 22. What was the other leading race in Greece? The Ionians. 23. What were the two great centers of Hellenic life? Sparta, the capital of the Dorians, and the Athens, the capital of the Ionians. 24. What change was there in the names of these races? Each was called after its capital, and are known as the Spartans and Athenians. 25. What were the chief characteristics of the Spartans? They were rough and plain in their habits, pitiless, fearless warriors in battle, and were enemies of trade and the fine arts. 26. What were the characteristics of the Athenians? They were refined in their tastes, democratic, commercial, and lovers of music painting, and sculpture. 27. Who is said to have introduced the alphabet into Greece? Cadmus, who brought it from Phoenicia. 28. Why is the second age called Homeric? Because Homer immortalized this period by his poetry. 29. When did Homer live? Sometime between 1000 B.C. and 870 B.C. 30. What are Homer's greatest poems? The Iliad and the Odyssey. 31. What criticism has been offered on the two poems of Homer? That they were not written by one man, 
but were fragments of old poems collected by different persons. 32. How have they been honored? The cities of Greece owned state copies of his works, which not even the treasures of kings could buy, and his poems were then, as now, the standard classics in the literary education. 33. What great lawgiver lived in this period? Lycurgus. 34. What is said of Lycurgus? He declined the Spartan crown and made the people swear to abide by his laws until his return. Then he left the country and died in another land. 35. How were the people taught by Lycurgus? To speak in short sentences. Hence the laconic style of language. 36. What was the name of Sparta during his rule? Laconier, hence the word laconic. 37. Did the Greeks have any central government? They did not, but necessity caused them to form treaties. 38. What united all Greece in a sacred bond? The four great national games. 39. How long did these games last at a time? For many days, similar to a county or state fair. 40. What were they? Olympic, Pythian, Nemean, and Isthmian. 41. Which was the greatest? The Olympic. 42. Describe the Olympic Games. Held every four years at Olympia, races of all kinds were engaged in, the ballads of Homer were recited, and the victor was crowned with a crown of olive or laurel. 43. Who contended in these games? Greeks from all over the world, but no other nations. 44. What effect did these sports have on military operations? All military operations ceased during their continuance. 45. Who founded the Olympic Games? Tradition says Hercules. 46. What is meant by the Olympiad? As this festival occurred so regularly, it was used as a measure of time, the year 776 B.C. to 772 B.C., being the first Olympiad. 47. What two states were the greatest contenders in these games, Athens and Sparta? 48. What was the next festival of importance? The Pythian in honor of the god Apollo. 49. What was a special feature of the Pythian festival? The contest of poetry, music, and oratory. 50. When was it held? the third year of every Olympiad. 51. Whose honor was celebrated by the Nemean Games? The Greek god Zeus. 52. How often were they held? Every two years near Cleone. 53. Where were the Isthmian Games held? On the Isthmus of Corinth, near the temple of Poseidon, the sea god. 54. What may be said of the Spartans at this time? They became masters of most of their near neighbors and got control of the peninsula. 55. What may be said of Athens, the rival of Sparta? Athens also increased in power and influence. 56. Who gave a code of laws to Athens? Draco. 57. What is said of Draco's laws? That they were written in blood. 58. Why were they thus spoken of? because of their severity, the smallest offense being punishable by death. 59. What did Draco say in defense of his laws? The smallest crime deserves death, and I can find no heavier penalty for the greatest. 60. Who canceled Draco's severe laws? Solon, who ruled at Athens from 594 to 560 B.C. 61. When was the age of tyranny and why so called? from 650 to 500 B.C., because many of the cities were governed by despots. 62. Who founded a public library at Athens? Pisistratus, who ruled from 560 to 527 B.C. 63. What institution was devised at this time to prevent future tyranny? Ostracism. 64. What was ostracism? Any citizen could be banished without trial by a vote of the people, each citizen writing the name of the person whom he wished to banish on a shell, called Ostracon. 
six thousand votes being required against the person to determine his condemnation sixty five what was the original meaning of the word tyrant it was at first applied by the greeks to a person who became king in a city where the law did not authorize one afterward the tyrant became cruel and the word took on the meaning we now give it sixty six who established a democracy at athens cleisthenes sixty seven where had greece any colonies in asia minor italy and in africa sixty eight when did athens become a republic in the year five hundred ten b c sixty nine what effect did this have on the colonies the asiatic colonies revolted against persia who had lately subdued them seventy what did the athenians do for the colonies and what was the result they sent assistance which precipitated the persian wars seventy one why called the persian wars because for eleven years the persians were trying to subdue greece seventy two who was ruler of persia at this time darius seventy three whom did darius send with the army for the first invasion his son-in-law mardonius seventy four what was the result of this invasion it was an entire failure the fleet being wrecked off mount athos and a large part of the army drowned seventy five when was the second invasion in the year four hundred ninety b c seventy six where did the two armies meet on the plains of marathon seventy seven what was the number of persons in each army persians over one hundred thousand athenians ten thousand an extraordinary disparity seventy eight what was the result of the battle the persians were defeated and driven to their vessels and they then sailed away seventy nine how is this conflict regarded as one of the world's greatest battles eighty why if the persians had seceded the character of european civilization would have been entirely changed becoming asiatic eighty one how many generals were in the grecian army at the battle of marathon ten each of whom had command for one day eighty two name three of the most noted generals aristides miltiades and themistocles eighty three who was considered the greatest miltiades eighty four what did each of the other generals do they each resigned in favor of miltiades eighty five what is miltiades called the hero of marathon eighty six what became of miltiades he died in prison of wounds received in a treasonable attack on the island of peros eighty seven how long was it until the next invasion ten years four hundred eighty b c eighty eight who led the invasion xerxes the son of darius eighty nine how many men had xerxes over one million ninety where did the armies meet at the pass of thermopylae ninety one who met xerxes at thermopylae leonidas with three hundred spartan soldiers ninety two what was the result of the battle leonidas and all but two of his three hundred were slain ninety three how large was leonidas entire army six thousand persons ninety four where were they at the battle of thermopylae he had dismissed all but the three hundred spartans and four hundred thespians who were in reserve ninety five what caused his great defeat the treachery of a greek who admitted the persians to a pass ninety six what did xerxes do next he pressed on into greece and burnt athens ninety seven where was the next battle a naval one off the isle of salamis ninety eight what was the result of this battle a great victory for the grecians ninety nine how long did the battle last from morning till night one hundred after this engagement what did xerxes do he withdrew and returned to persia in dismay one hundred one did he take all his army 
he left Mardonius with 300,000 men in Thessaly. 102. What became of Mardonius? He was defeated and slain the next year at the Battle of Plati and Mycale. 103. Who were the Grecian generals in the Battle of Plati? Aristide and Pausanias. 104. What effect did these wars have on Persia? No Persian army was ever again seen in Greece. 105. What was Aristides called by his countrymen? The just, on account of his incorruptible character. Tradition says he was so honest he did not have enough to meet his funeral expenses. 106. Who was the greatest statesman of Athens? Pericles. 107. What is the period in which he lived sometimes called the Age of Pericles? 108. How long did he direct affairs of Athens? For 40 years, 469 through 429 B.C. 109. What is said of his administration? It was the most splendid the Athenians ever had. Art and literature flourished, and the city was embellished with the most magnificent edifices. 110. What military event took place in 431 B.C.? The long-continued jealousy between Sparta and Athens broke out in war. 111. What was this war called? The Peloponnesian War. 112. Who was the Spartan general in this war? Lysander. 113. What was the result of this war? After 27 years of alternate victories and defeat, Athens fell. 114. What may be said of Sparta? It became the leading city of Greece. 115. How did Sparta govern Athens? By 30 men, sometimes called the 30 tyrants, on account of their cruelty. 116. What did Athens do under the 30 tyrants? Began to regain her political principles, and after the Athenians had been ruled eight months, they overthrew the tyrants and re-established a democratic government. 117. What great man lived in Athens at this time? Socrates. 118. When was he born? In 468 B.C. 119. What crime was Athens guilty of in the year 399 B.C.? The putting to death of Socrates. 120. Why was he put to death? On the false charge of introducing a new worship to corrupt the youth. 121. On what condition was he offered his life? That he would cease to teach. 122. What great truth did he teach? The immortality of the soul, the beauty and necessity of virtue, and the moral responsibility of man. 123. How was he put to death? He was sentenced to drink a cup of poison hemlock, which he took in his prison chamber, surrounded by his friends, with whom he cheerfully conversed till the last. 124. Who were his most eminent disciples? Plato and Xenophon, from whom we derive our knowledge of his doctrines, since he himself committed nothing to writing. 125. What did Plato found? the academic school of philosophy, so-called because he delivered his lectures in the academic gardens. 126. By what is he best known? By his arguments in regard to the immortality of the soul, he taught that death is to be desired rather than feared. 127. What other great schools of philosophy were founded in the 4th century B.C.? The Peripatetics? the Epicureans, and the Stoics. 128. Who founded the Peripatetic School? Aristotle, who was a student of Plato. 129. Why so called? Aristotle delivered his lectures while walking up and down the shady porches of the Lyceum, surrounded by his pupils, hence called Peripatetics, walkers. 130. What has been the influence of Aristotle's teaching? He, more than any other philosopher, originated ideas 
whose influence is still felt the father of logic the principles he laid down in his study have never been superseded one hundred thirty one who were the epicureans the followers of epicurus one hundred thirty two what did epicurus teach that the chief end of life is enjoyment he was strictly moral and taught that virtue is the road to happiness but his followers so perverted this the epicurean became a synonym for loose and luxurious living one hundred thirty three who were the stoics they were the followers of zeno one hundred thirty four from what was their name derived the painted portico stoa under which he taught one hundred thirty five what was their belief pain and pleasure were equally despised by them and indifference to all external conditions was considered the highest virtue one hundred thirty six what is the name of the historic period from three hundred seventy one to three hundred sixty one b c the theban one hundred thirty seven why called the theban period because of the war between the spartans and thebans one hundred thirty eight who was the leading general of thebes epaminondas one hundred thirty nine what famous battle was fought the battle of leuctra one hundred forty what was the result of this battle the defeat of the spartans for the first time in their history one hundred forty one when was this battle fought in the year three hundred seventy one b c one hundred forty two what did sparta do after the battle sent ambassadors to athens to solicit aid one hundred forty three how long did thebes rule greece until the death of empaminondas in the battle of mantinea one hundred forty four when was the battle of mantinea fought in the year three hundred sixty two b c one hundred forty five what was the result of this battle with the death of the great leader the theban cause died one hundred forty six what effect did these civil and national wars have on greece the states were so exhausted that they were not able to withstand a very formidable invasion one hundred forty seven who were the next to invade greece the macedonians one hundred forty eight what is this period called the macedonian three hundred sixty two through one hundred forty six b c one hundred forty nine who were the macedonians barbarians who lived just north of greece one hundred fifty what is meant by barbarians the greeks called all people who did not use their language barbarians or babblers one hundred fifty one what did the macedonians say as to their own origin they claimed to be descendants of hercules one hundred fifty two what privileges did this give them they were admitted to the olympic games one hundred fifty three who was king of macedon at this time philip the second who had been a hostage at thebes and had learned the arts of war one hundred fifty four was king philip well educated he was and could speak the greek language with great fluency one hundred fifty five what did philip proceed to do to make war against the athenians one hundred fifty six what was the result he defeated the grecians in the great battle of chaeronea august seven three hundred thirty eight b c one hundred fifty seven what did the athenian congress do they acknowledged the supremacy of philip and appointed him to command the grecian army in their proposed war against persia one hundred fifty eight what became of philip he was assassinated at a feast at the age of forty-seven years one hundred fifty nine who succeeded philip his son alexander the great one hundred sixty how old was alexander at this time twenty years one hundred sixty one what did the grecian congress do conferred on alexander the same power they had on his father one hundred sixty two what did alexander then do with thirty-five thousand greeks 
he began his march to conquer the world. 163. Was he successful? He was, and became the Oriental monarch. 164. What did he do? He conquered all Persia, and finally Tyre, and built the city of Alexandria near the mouth of the Nile. 165. Where and when did he die? At Babylon, 323 B.C., aged 33 years. 166. After his death, what did Greece do? It formed a confederacy of states. 167. Were they successful? They were not, but were still under the control of Macedon. 168. What great event happened to Greece in the year 168 B.C.? It became a Roman province. 169. What was Greece called by the Romans? The province of Achaia. 170. What great orator lived at this time? Demosthenes, born 385, died 322 B.C. 171. Where did Demosthenes live? In Athens. 172. Was he naturally a fine speaker? Was not. Had a weak constitution and defective utterance. 173. Was he wealthy? Was left an orphan at the age of seven years with some property which was squandered by relatives. 174. How did he become an orator? By striving to regain his property and pleading for his rights before the Athenian courts. 175. Was he successful? At the age of 21, he regained a part of his property. 176. What are his most noted orations? His Philippics. 177. What were the Philippics? Orations against the invasion of Philip. 178. What did the Macedonians do with Demosthenes? They threw him into prison but he escaped by the aid of friends and remained in exile until the death of Alexander. 179. Did he ever return? He did, but was again sought by the Macedonian king, Antipater. 180. Where did he take refuge? In the temple. 181. Was he captured? He carried with him poison to prevent his capture, and before the officers of Antipater could capture him, he took from his own hand the fatal dose. 182. What is the period from 146 B.C. to 395 A.D. called the Roman? 183. What did the Romans do when they captured Greece? They sacked and burnt the city of Corinth, which had been the capital of the Achaean League, and later Caesar rebuilt it. 184. What may be said of Athens? It continued to be the seat of culture and education, and Roman scholars flocked there for its advantages. 185. How were the Grecians now governed? Entirely by Rome, for 541 years. 186. When did Paul visit Greece? About the year 50 A.D. 187. Where did he dwell? At Corinth and followed his occupation of tent-making for two years. 188. When was the Roman capital removed, and where? In the year 330 A.D., to Byzantium, a Greek city, after it known as Constantinople, Constantine City. 189. When and how was the Roman Empire divided? In 395 A.D., into an eastern and western empire. 190. To which one did Greece belong? On account of location to the eastern. 191. What period now begins? The Byzantine, 395 to 1453 A.D. 192. What was the condition of Greece for the next 1,000 years? Nothing of importance. A few invasions by Normans and Turks. 193. What finally happened? In 1453, Mohammed II took Byzantium and conquered all Greece. 
194. What did Greece then become? A part of the Turkish Empire. 195. What may be said of Greece under the Turks? The people were greatly oppressed and the country but little improved. 196. When was the Greek church established? During the Byzantine period. 197. Has there been any uprising against the Turks? One in 1821, in which Lord Byron, the poet, took sides with the Greeks, but one half the population is said to have perished, and large tracts of land were reduced to a desert. 198. What was the result? The independence of Greece was proclaimed in 1822. 199. What countries formed a league to assist Greece, England, Russia, and France? 200. Who is the present king? Prince George. 201. When did he become king? In the year 1863. 202. What was the religion of the ancient Greeks? A mythology which invested every stream, grove, and mountain with gods and goddesses, nymphs, and naiads. 203. How were their deities worshipped? With songs and dance, dramas and festivals, spirited contests and gorgeous processions. 204. Name three great Greek tragic poets, Aeschylus, Sophocles, and Euripides. 205. Name three historians, Herodotus, called the father of history, Thucydides, and Xenophon. 206. Name two great sculptors, Phidias and Praxiteles. 207. What are the three styles of Grecian architecture? Doric, Ionic, and Corinthian, distinguished by the shape of their columns. 208. What celebrated ruin is at Athens? The Parthenon, originally a temple sacred to Pallas Athene, the patron goddess of Athens. 209. What is said of its sculptures? The magnificent sculptures that adorned it were designed by Phidias. Some of them are now in the British Museum and are the finest in existence. End of chapter 6